month. I'm chief correspondent for Mashable. Raise your hand if you read Mashable. Nicely done. If you don't, please leave the room. <laughs> don't do that. I'm, I'm joking. Please don't leave. Uh, Warren, do you have anything to say? I want to say thanks for being here. And, and um, I'm going to do the camera. It's, it's in, so we're going to take this slide off. I was trying to leave it up as long as possible so you could see who's here. So. Uh, All right. So we should just get started then. Yeah. Uh, so I know this is part of Kids at Play and, and sort of robots, uh, kids' best friends. Uh, that's the, the concept here. And we have a bunch of robots represented. Apparently, I'm not, am I not speaking loudly enough? I'm trying to project here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through and get a, a, a fairly quick demonstration from each of these gentlemen of the robots they brought. And then we're going to have a more free form conversation about robots in our lives and uh, in the lives of our children. So uh, maybe we should start, uh, since we now have a sort of random order here, we've got those uh, mechanoid droids. Uh, and they are from, what's the company? I want to get this right, from Spin, Ma Spin Master, Spin Master yes. which has been around for a long time. Those are actually kind of a, those robots are kind of a sensation, I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, yeah. Well, Chris, do not, Chris uh, do not feel, uh, you know, like, wow, okay, that thing's freaking me out. So, Chris, why don't you uh, give us a quick walkthrough of uh, the mechanoids, and then we'll uh, move on from there. Sure. So, uh, these are the mechanoids from Spin Master. Um, we were uh, fortunate enough to come out this fall with uh, the G15 and the G15KS, and these are our uh, ones for next year, the G16 and the G16KS. Um, they're part of Meccano, which if you happen to be not from the United States, you actually might know. <laughs> um, Meccano, uh, known in the United States as Erector Set. So a very, very old brand uh, at Spin Master. We were lucky enough to acquire them a few years ago. And we decided we're taking this <coughs> fantastic mechanical engineering system, nuts and bolts, extremely durable. You can make them very tall. Um, and, uh, and adding electronics to them, making, bringing them into the 21st century, creating an app that can control them and interact with them. So um, I'm going to turn Mechanoid on here. Boop. Give you a view behind the robot. <laughs> the you magic never get behind. This. Sorry. There we go. And Are you controlling that with an, app, uh, with, uh, an app and an iPad, it looks like, right? Oh, always a good idea to plug in your robots. He forgot to plug it in. There we go. Does not work on zero point energy. He must be plugged in. So, um, so one of the new features we have coming up for this fall is. Um, so he kind of walks you through all of the things you need to do for him. Out of the box, he works on voice recognition. They both do, the big one and the small one. So, uh, you know, one of the things I love so much about the, the fact that the toy industry is getting more involved in robotics is we're bringing a lot of the learnings we've had over the past 100 years of how to make things that are cool, how to make things that have personality, that have uh, some kind of connection with, the, with their users. So um, this fellow over here, one of the things we've done for this year is we've uh, We've added a hug feature to him. So when I come around here, he's going to be bringing his, he brings his arms down. And so, so our servos work not only as motors, but also as position sensors. So as he's trying to bring his arms down, he saw that I was there. And he was like, oh, there's something there. Therefore, equal hug and you know, acknowledge the user. Um, so we're just trying to basically, again, bring more of that, that fun feature in. We've recently made our. Um, our uh, communication protocol for how we communicate with all of our different uh, items here, open source. So um, I've got a little demo here, which uh, let's see if it's going to be working. This is actually, we've replaced the Mecha Brain with an Arduino. So now you can write your own code, no matter what you want. And when I put my hand here in the distance sensor, it closes its little claws around me. So um, very neat stuff. We're just, again, trying to push for more and more adoptability, open source, um, you know, I mean, Meccano by its nature is a very open platform. You can rebuild this however you want. You can rebuild it as a claw, for example. Um, All right, so, and that one is $400, the, the large one you said, Yeah, right? this one will be retailing uh, next fall for $400. Right. And the little one is actually being um, sort of cost, uh, cost improved uh, down to 150 or okay. uh, 
Yeah. And coming in 2020, the uh, erector said car that you can build yeah. to drive around autonomous. Well, they recently built a bridge in, uh, in the UK, a bridge made completely out of Meccano parts, the old school type yeah. stuff. So we're very, very excited about this system. Okay, so uh, excellent. Uh, moving on to uh, the dog, Chip. Chip, so Dave, you want to explain a little bit about uh, the little puppy you've got in your hands there? Sure. I'm Davin. I'm from Wowee. Um, the last couple of years, we've really been enhancing our, our sensors. Uh, we feel that sensors are extremely important in, um, in giving our products life and intelligence. And we've been looking at how to make uh, our robots know where they are and what's in their environment. Uh, we created CHIP uh, to take a lot of this great technology and some new locomotion systems we've been developing. And we've included with CHIP a few accessories. So our robot toy comes with its own robot toys. Um, Chip comes with a ball that he can recognize and see and chase, actually play fetch with a ball. Maybe I'll show you guys a little game of, a little game of uh, pass the ball or soccer with Chip. Comes with a charging base as well, and Chip can actually uh, recharge when his power gets low. So what's nice about that is you don't have like an off button uh, to worry about or, power or, or batteries to change. When he gets low on power, he'll drive himself to his base, and he'll be ready for you next time. Maybe you have to do it over is here. Is the camera maybe? reach or is that too yeah, far? Yeah, I think so. Um, can you help me out with that cable? Oh, yeah. sure. Oops. Or could you have your robot help me out? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And uh, how much kibble does this eat? Uh, no kibble. Okay. No Just kibble. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so you can see right here, I'm able to have Chip follow me around, he sees my smart band that I'm wearing, and he can actually follow me. Um, what's cool about this, more than just following, uh, is that if I'm wearing this and I enter my home, I'll start to hear some barking because uh, Chip's getting excited. If I, I walk see in, that smart band. If I walk in, up on that. There you so go. it has the arrows. Yep, I'll show you a bit more about the smart band. Uh, if you walk into a room, it knows you're there and it'll greet you and get excited. If you like something Chip does, because Chip does a lot of tricks, uh, you can give him a thumbs up, and that's a button over here on the smart band, and that reinforces that behavior. So we, we like to think of the out-of-the-box experience. So it'll do something fun right away because you like that. It'll do a bit more of that. But it'll also remember longer term that you like that type of behavior, and it's going to evolve in, in the future to do more of that type of behavior. Really better than a real dog. They don't I mean, remember anything. <laughs> yeah, it has, they a, has, a long, has a long memory. Lance Cam. Excellent. No, great. No, please don't put that cam <laughs> All right. So uh, that's excellent. It's, a really, uh, it's not only cute, but that's uh, one of the smarter robot dogs I've seen in a long time. Uh, so why don't we move on to uh, that rather large and humanoid-looking robot down there called iPal. Uh, okay. John, you, you have the, the ball now. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm John Ostrom. Uh, our company is Avatar Mind, uh, and our robot is iPal, that friendly-looking little uh, contraption there. And uh, we're going to start the demo. Most of the time I'm going to spend is just showing the demo of the robot, but let me give a little introduction. It's really intended to be a companion robot for young children. Um, it can sing, dance, play games, tell stories, let the kids connect to their friends uh, through a video chat on the screen. It can also let them attach to the internet. And for parents, it's really a teacher. It can provide educational uh, programs, both through speaking and actually on the tablet. I really want to see it dancing. Sorry. I yeah. just, and, and I'm, now, I'm now interested in seeing the dance. Yeah, and, and parents, parents can also uh, use it to monitor their child from anywhere. For example, if there's a mother who's away at work, and she wants to see how her child is doing at home, she can actually use her smartphone to actually remotely control the robot and uh, let them view and uh, communicate with her child at home. Um, and we've also gotten a great interest in this robot, which we don't have products yet for, yeah, using this yeah. robot for children yeah, yeah. with special needs like autism. In fact, we have a partner in our booth who will be using the robot to show uh, autism therapies for children yeah, using the robot, and also elderly parents. So I think anytime you're ready, Ji Ping. Yeah, anytime you're ready. There's a little gap in it. It starts a series of different programs singing, dancing, telling stories. Uh, I hope you all like children's songs. It's one of, our, one of the big hits. Yes, it's our favorite. The, the best part is coming up when we have the cage match between iPal and uh, Mechanoid. Yeah. That'll be right after this. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, basically, iPad will also, uh, will also have an app store. So for example, uh, people can download new apps, upgrade. It'll be a, a children-specific app store, so everything is age-appropriate for children. The whole thing actually runs Android. In fact, sort of any Android app will run on the screen there. And there's an SDK, so any Android uh, developer can actually create new you know, motions, new movements for the robot. And there's also a content editor, which is sort of a drag and drop thing that makes it easy for parents and uh, you know, teachers and even children to create new applications. I can see another thing. All right, and that's, uh, I mean, that's coming later. That's not available. Yet. Not available, yes. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, we're not available in the US yet. We're actually a Chinese uh -oh. company. So we expect it to be available it later on York. this year in the US. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's really just asking for a hug, apparently. Someone hug her, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I pal likes, loves attention. So, you know, it doesn't, once it gets started, it doesn't like to stop. Yeah, then it doesn't stop. It'll probably keep going. Uh, all right, why don't we move on to the, uh, the, the last robot here, which is, looks a little bit, when you look at it like this, like a rolling eye. So this is called uh, so Dash, yes. right? Uh, Vikas, what, you, yeah. yeah, so why don't you explain this robot to us? Sure. So I'm Vikas, uh, one of the founders and CEO of Wonder Workshop. Uh, we created Dash uh, for kids under the age of 10 or 11. Uh, primarily introduced them to the world of coding and robotics in a way where they have the ability to create um, stuff that even adults may not be able to. Um, so Dash uh, works with a touch device to programming, uh, for programming the robot. Uh, comes a bunch of applications that we've created. Uh, has block-based interfaces like Scratch and Blockly, and also specifically one that we created with for robotics uh, called Wonder. Uh, which kids last year used, uh, thousands of kids used for a robotics competition uh, that we held nationwide. Can we see the screen? So it's a simple uh, drag and drop interface which where you build state machines and decision interfaces for kids, uh, for, the, for the robot to run. Um, I connect over Bluetooth to the robot. Um, See that uh, uh, yeah. view, Carrie? That, this makes this whole camera worthwhile right there. Look at that shot. And then, <laughs> I can run the program very quickly. Now the robot's uh, turning to whoever's speaking. So hey, can you hear me? Oh, look. Hello. Going? It's going fine. Are you looking at me? Hey, Dash. <laughs> hey, Dash. How's it going? The, problem is the, yeah. the audio yeah, is yeah, coming from above. So, and the beauty of what this is that this allows the unlimited ability for kids to create new things. And here's, for example, one program that someone created that I have it on my iPad, which is a simple game that someone can transform the robot into. It's a tug of war. And along with running on the robot, I can actually save it on the robot. So let me run it real time. And now, do you want to play tug of war with me? OK, what am I doing? So I can pull the robot this way, or I can pull the robot in the front. OK, oh, I pulled it too far. So now I can, oh. All right, oh, so I can then, look at me. <laughs> Uh -huh. well, now I'm really angry. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, sort of working. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right. And how much is that? Uh, Dash is 149. Okay, 149. Is that shipping right now? Yes, it is. All right. So, so what we have here are a really wide range of robot types. I mean, uh, from a $1,500 robot that can be a home companion uh, to sort of a more, bit more STEM-oriented uh, uh, robot here in Dash. Uh, and I know we kind of talked about these robots as, as potential companions, but I guess I have a, a general question. I mean, should we be thinking, should we have our children think of these robots as toys or robots? I and mean, what is the preference? And maybe I'll start, Devin, with you, because yours might be most considered a toy. So I, we get that question a lot about all our products, um, the, the type of sensors and processors and, and engineering that goes into these products is, is not fully compatible with what we call toys. But the truth is, is when you look at something that's that size, that costs about that much, it's, it's, it's called a toy. Um, we think that there's uh, a really interesting play uh, for robot, robot, robot toys in the sense that you get that engineering, you get that, that, that same safety for a kid, the same appropriate age appropriateness of a product, but it is, it is an engineering piece. It is a bit more than just a toy. So when I, when I look at the, uh, the mechanoid, uh, 
it has a connection to the past, obviously, with the erector mm -hmm. set. Yes. Um, and I get, you know, I owned an erector, erector set. How many kids, how many kids, how many people here owned an erector set growing up? Yeah, I had one too, and you, uh, you know, it didn't have any, I, I think if you were really lucky, maybe you got one with a motor in it. Yeah. Uh, but mostly it was metal pieces and uh, nuts and bolts and, you know, and you weren't really thinking about learning anything. Uh, but when you're building something together, as you might be with this, and what do you think is the intention, or what is your intention with this? Is it pure fun, or is it really more about learning and robotics and, and, and trying to prepare kids from a, for a digital future? Well, uh, I, I think it's, I'm pretty safe to say that probably in a room full of engineers that learning is fun. Um, <laughs> So, you know, we're, gonna, I, we're giving out t-shirts later. As, as a that. kid programming, you know, writing code, basic code on my Atari, that was my definition of fun. Um, I, I feel like uh, this is sort of the, you know, amazing items like this, like, like Dash and Dot, like Chip, like Diet Palin, like Mechanoid, are really are putting the, the next future of engineers on the right path where they're learning about programming, they're learning about engineering, but they're doing it in a way that's, that's fun. It's no longer that learning is the chore, learning is part of the play. So I think that you know, we were all kind of uh, in alignment with that, with, with, the, with the new uh, programming languages and, and stuff like that. So um, you know, to make a long story short, you know, learning is absolutely, uh, play and learning are not dissimilar. Um, they, they used to be, it used to be, you know, you, you had your right. play time, you had recess, and then you mm -hmm. had classwork. Now the lines are getting so blurred. We'll have to, I'm sure there'll be a report or a study on how often the parents take over building the mechanoid and the kids are just <laughs> sitting there watching. Well, it's uh, funny, we, we found on some, a lot of the Amazon reviews, <clears> parents were like, my 11-year-old, my 8-year-old do not get along, but for 12 hours they work <laughs> together to put together a four-foot-tall robot right. and like, you know, it's the most happy I've ever seen them together, so. Robots bringing families together. <laughs> uh, when you look at something like iPal, uh, and I think this kind of goes a little bit more to the look and feel of these things and relates a little bit to Dash here, but when you look at iPal, um, it's both adorable, but maybe a little imposing. Like in a house, how, what sort of response have you seen both from adults and children to that particular robot? Well, I think most of the most adults seem to really like the look and feel. It was it's sort of intended to be something that children would would appeal to children. Mm -hmm. and basically, it's almost a cartoon-like shape. And uh, we've we've done a lot of studies in China. Unfortunately, not too many market surveys in the U.S. But something like 80% of children will come up immediately and start punching the screen, start playing around with it. <laughs> oh, kids! But, and there's. Uh, you know, and there, but there's a like maybe five or ten percent that are a little bit more reluctant, a little bit more standoffish, and it takes them a while to warm up to it. But I think so far, at least in our market surveys we've done, uh, you know, it's the response I think has been pretty good. No one really sees it as threatening, or okay. something that's concerned. And then you and I were talking about this, and I actually think it's an interesting discussion uh, about the colors. Uh, yes. And, you know, the the fact that it's got the pink. Uh, some people might think it's you know supposed to be like a female robot. Uh, but, but you said it's not necessarily intentional. You were trying to figure out like, yeah. what the right color is. So by show of hands, who would prefer a pink robot? Raise your hands. Okay. And then Anyone by show there? of hands, who would prefer blue? All right, so you're going to have to change it to blue. How about, neutral? How about neutral? Oh, I don't know what neutral is, by the way, but would you vote for neutral? But who would vote gender, for neutral? Neutral. gender neutral. Gender neutral. Gender neutral. Oh, green. green. Green wins. I'm sorry. So okay. if you could produce that quickly, that would be great. <laughs> so I think, I think uh, that's a, the good marketing survey. Look at that. See, we've, we've done your work for you here. So now I want to talk about Dash because Dash doesn't look like anything in a way. It looks like three balls sort of stuck together or a giant eyeball on, a, on three balls with it. It's a lot of whatever. I say that word too many times. Uh, but is it about form following function or is there something specific in the look here? No, so yeah, I think got something which was very intentional. Uh, when we wanted to bring, when you're designing the robot, uh, we, were did, we were doing a lot of testing with kids. Um, and when we took the robot to the kids and the wheels were visible, we always found that kids projected what they knew about the world onto the robot. So they thought of it as a car or a vehicle um, or a dog or, or something of the, that kind. And we wanted it to be something that kids can bring their imagination to it. So it's three-legged because there's nothing like this on this planet. So they can't equate this to be either a vehicle or an animal. It has one eye because nothing on this planet has one eye. If it had two eyes, again, it will more, more, feel more animal-like or human-like. So all of that was very intentionally done so that children would feel it, it is something that they can imagine anything it to be, and it can be that. 
Okay, that's interesting. Um, speaking of looks, uh, Devin, with, uh, with Chip, have you had it with any other live animals? I'm just curious yeah. how they re react to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you, you asked, actually. It's funny. Uh, last night on the way back from uh, one of the events, uh, we saw one of those uh, bomb-sniffing dogs. And uh, we did a quick, uh, a quick, uh, we did a quick photo op. They did not arrest you. They didn't. They didn't arrest us. They don't uh, like to be pet. See, that's the look of a geek right there. You guys. <laughs> right. Look how excited he is. Uh, no, it was, it was really nice. Um, I, I can't find the photo right now. Oh, but, you gotta find uh, it. We, be, we, I'll, I'll keep we believe you. But it was, it was, it was really interesting because um, uh, these dogs are obviously extremely well trained. Yes. So it's not exactly a representative test, but uh, they, they seem to, they seem to get on pretty well. Like they, they look wary of each other. But they, they, they connected, they, they identified that they were the same species, and, and things were okay. <laughs> and they all worked out. All it all worked right. out well. Um, so, you know, when, when parents are buying kids toys, uh, they're very price sensitive. Uh, and by and large, here we have products that are still, uh, you know, at least $100, at least $200. Your chip is how much? Uh, $200, $200. $200. Uh, how do you convince parents that these toys are worth buying? You know, if you don't have, for example, someone like you in the house, Chris, a geek, you know, a true nerd who's going to say, I don't care how Thank much it costs, <laughs> I'm bringing it in. Like, what do you do? You know, do any of you have any special marketing ideas or, or ways of communicating these, these things out that uh, inspire people to spend that kind of money? I mean, I, I could say that that is probably, and I, I, I'm sure you guys would agree, that's probably one of the biggest challenges we face. Um, these products uh, either have to be assembled, or they have to be experienced, or they have to be tried with an app. There's, there's many elements to them, and it's very hard to do that on a shelf in the store. Uh, and there's so many elements to that, of course, you know, online and social. Um, we, we obviously do TV commercials, we do press stuff. You have to just do everything to try to get the story out, and it's the best presence you can, can have on the shelf in the store. Um, and I know, like, with, with Mechanoid, I discovered it uh, through customer reviews. That's the way I actually saw it, first cool. saw it, and so that, you know, I think social media is a kind of important part of it because it tells people more than just, here's a product, that it shows them the, the value proposition. I am curious, which of the robots here have their own Twitter accounts? All right, well, first of all, Davin just raised his hand, and I think he thinks he's a robot, so. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Do the robots themselves have Twitter accounts, any of them? Uh, Mechanoid is a Facebook page, I don't, I don't use it. Okay, okay, Facebook page, that's actually a good place to be. Uh, Dash doesn't have anything. No. All right, you should set that up. You can do it while you're here if you'd like, it's totally fine, okay. just start tweeting from it. What about iPal? I would imagine, iPal's almost human size. Yeah, we're just sort of getting started with our marketing over here. This is one of the first shows we've done, so we're trying to gauge interest and figure out what the best thing is to do, so, so that's a good suggestion. Um, I am curious from the audience, uh, how many of you are planning on buying a robot for your children or some child that you know? Is one, at first I saw one woman raise her hand about halfway like this, like, shh, buying a robot. So raise your hands again, I wanna see that. Oh, wow, okay, guys. So they'll be, grab their orders before they leave the room. We take credit cards. Oh, they take credit cards. Do we have time for uh, questions? I didn't know. Uh, we have like two minutes. Well, if, we, if there are any questions from the audience, now would be a good time to raise your hands and we will ignore you. No. Uh, you right there. Yes, you gentlemen in the front. So um, a few different sensors on chip uh, that can sense motion, but we also include a smart band uh, with chip, and this is uh, a way of communicating with chip, and it has a special navigation platform we built nice. called uh, Beacon Sense, and that projects an infrared uh, map into the room, and chip can localize that. The ball and the bed also have the same system, and chip can decide what it's looking for. So you throw the ball, chip will go find it, and then bring it back to you. Also, if you put a piece of bacon in your pocket, that works really well, too. Any other questions? So a lot of these robots have hard shell appearance, and they're a bunch of hard shells, but if you notice that you're at the where they're actually pliable and soft, are any of these plants going to be like I think you're referring to the Big Hero 6 robot, the big inflatable, soft, cuddly one. No, no, I think I feel like that's uh, that's something that we definitely are, are looking forward to, and and again, bringing sort of, you know, there's a perfect line between robotics and and humanism. That's really is animatronics. So the more you can make these things feel more like people, and you know, whether it's by adding softer, you know, textures and stuff like that, or, or, or really trying to add features that matter to people, 
um, you're really going to see a much, much more, a much better response. You know, again, robots are made for people; they're not, you know, made for robots. There's a lot of research being done right now in soft robotics uh, that actually inspired the hero uh, robot in the movie. Uh, so uh, the people working on that stuff right now. Uh, but I also have heard quite a bit from uh, roboticists about the animation that they build into robots just to make them uh, more compatible with uh, humans. Uh, any other questions? I see a gentleman right up here. We Hi. have um, zero seconds, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about form factors. So Vikash was talking about how he arrived at the form factor for Dash, and you were talking a little bit about making robots more human. I think just in the general world of robots, there's a lot of debate as to how human should a robot look. And in the world of kids, how are you finding that robots are playing? How do you decide on the form factor in terms of what kids will uh, uh, you know, be comfortable with versus be intimidated by or scared by? Dash? Yeah, so there's, I mean, uh, our perspective, I'm sure it's, everyone will have their own. Uh, for us was to, uh, we focus on very young, very young children, which is six-year-olds to 11-year-olds. And for them, uh, the question is, how do we bring them to the world where they feel a robot, doesn't have to be humanoid robot, any robot, is something that they can relate to and do a lot with. So an example was, we wanted it to be both for boys and girls. So this one doesn't have the wheels visible, primarily because we found that the moment you have the wheels visible, girls tend to not want to play with it. The moment you hide the wheels, suddenly it becomes very different. It becomes very accessible. So that's one of those examples which are not huge innovation, but a, I would say almost a serendipitous discovery that you find that makes it accessible. So a little subtle changes. Uh, speaking of subtle changes, we're going to be leaving this stage now. Uh, so thank you to all of my uh, panelists here and all of the really cool robots. Really enjoyed this. And thank you to all of you. Thank you.